Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this How to Play Core Space video, we're going to go through everything you need to know about crew dashboards. Each trader will have their own crew dashboard, and the trader board will fit into that crew dashboard. The dashboard is split into four sections the trader board, the items, the class, and the pegs. The trader board shows the trader's statistics and personal details. Note that the reverse of the board shows the trader in their civilian guise. The character species is listed at the top of the board, and the type, which will be captain or crew, is listed at the bottom. You'll find that as we work through the rules for the game, certain rules may refer to these attributes. Now let's look at the statistics. These are depicted with a series of circles and include the character's health, actions, skill and career. Health represents the character's toughness and stamina and shows how much damage they can take before they are defeated. Action shows how many actions the character can make each round. Skill shows how many specialised skills the character can use in a game. Career represents everything the character has learned during their time in the crew and affects how many skills they can learn, as well as improving their other statistics later in a campaign. And we're going to cover all these details as we work through the How to Play Core Space series. Now let's look at default versus potential. You'll notice that each statistic has some spaces filled out with an inner circle. These are the default circles, but some are left blank like these here, and these are the potential. Default spaces represent the character's starting abilities, and the inner circle should be filled in with a dry white pen at the start of the game. Potential spaces represent the character's ability to improve in a campaign, and these spaces can be filled in to add points to the character's statistics. A character can never exceed their potential, but they can drop below their default. In the bottom left corner of the character board, you'll see this number here, 57, and this represents the points value of this character, and points are the value of a character's total worth that you use when selecting a crew. Now let's look at base abilities. In addition to any skills granted by their class, some characters also start with some skills or abilities as standard, and you can see these in the bottom left of the card, and Ariana has got the reflexes skill here. The skills will be pre-marked with a certain level, and you can see here that Ariana's reflexes skill is level one. You may also see some additional icons, such as this footprint icon here, and we're going to cover that in loads more detail as we work through the series. This area of the trader board here, in the bottom right, can be punched out, leaving a space for an item, specifically armour. Armour will grant additional protection to the character when attacked, and its rules will only apply when they're placed in this slot. However, don't discard the piece that you've removed, this piece here, because many characters have an additional base ability in this area, which will be in effect whenever they are not weighed down by armour. Now let's take a look at items. The items that a character starts with or collects during a game are stored here, in this section. There is an actual physical limit the character cannot carry more items than the tray can hold, and you can see here that we can carry four of these small items. But some items are larger, such as rifles, and they take up more space, so it's important to use this area wisely. We also have a slot for the class board, and the class board represents the character's profession and specialisation, and therefore the type of skills available to them. Each of the coloured icons represents a skill, so here's all the different skills here that the hunter has. The spaces around it can be marked with the dry white pen to show the character's proficiency with that skill, and this skill will go from level 1 to 3. 
When selecting a crew, the player will fill in a number of these spaces equal to the trader's current career points to show their starting skills. As the character's career advances in a campaign, more points will be allocated to the class board to learn new skills or upgrade existing ones. The statistics on the trader board are fixed during play, but the in-game action takes place down here in this section. These holes are filled with the plastic pegs to show the fluctuating state of the character's abilities. The top row shows the character's health using the green pegs. At the start of a game, pegs are added to match the character's current health statistic and pegs may be removed or added during the game as the character takes damage. If there are no pegs remaining on their board, the character is defeated. Unless stated otherwise, a character can never exceed their current health statistic. The second row shows the character's skill using the purple pegs and just like health, this is set at the start of the game to match the skill statistic. If there are no pegs remaining, the character may no longer use skills. The bottom row shows the amount of ammo carried by the character using the yellow pegs. Characters always start the game with a full magazine of ammo, but this will change as weapons are fired and reloaded. If there are no pegs remaining, the character may not fire their ranged weapon. Now we've gone through all the individual elements of the crew dashboard, let's use Ariana's crew dashboard as an example. So starting off here, we can see that Ariana has a default health statistic of 5, but the potential to raise it to, si uh, to 7, and it's currently at 6 now. So we filled that in and marked it with our uh, whiteboard marker pen just to denote that. She also has two default actions, but the potential for three, and she has four skill points and the potential for six, and I've marked this one up to five here. She has a default career of four points, but currently has 10 points with a maximum of 15. And Ariana's base ability is the reflexes skill, and this is at level one, so that's marked for us already. Then in addition, she has the icon that you can see here, the footprint icon in her armor slot. So if she's not wearing armor, she will be able to move an extra inch. Ariana is carrying a common pistol and an energy baton. And she's allocated her 10 career points to seven different skills in the hunter class. She's a level one marksman, disarm and ambush, fade to black and evade. She's a level two combat expert and a level three weapons expert. And Ariana will start a game with six health pegs. That's equal to a health statistic. She'll have five skill pegs equal to her skill statistic. And she's going to have seven ammo pegs. And that's going to give her a full magazine. That brings us to the end of part one of the How to Play Core Space series, so come and join me for part two where we'll look at the key concepts that include the hostility board, combat dice and chance and randomization. Everything we go through in this How to Play Core Space video series is taken from the Core Space rulebook and you can buy this separately or find it as part of the Core Space starter set. And if you haven't got this set already, then I can highly recommend it. And I've done a video where I've unboxed all the contents and gone through it in loads of detail so you can see exactly what's included and a little bit about the game. So if you'd like to check that out, I'll put links in the description below to Battle Systems website where you can get all their products, but also Element Games where you can save up to 20%. And you can also watch videos on how to build the terrain and all the different components that come with it. And then I've done another video where we go through all the tokens and cards in lots of detail too. I've also done videos where you can learn how to paint both Ariana and all the other miniatures that come in that core set. So check out those videos if you're interested in painting your miniatures and I can highly recommend doing that. I hope you enjoyed this video and it'd be great to see you in the next video of the series. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this and don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. 
If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description. And it'll be great to see you there.